back out. Now David Cohn, another redshirt freshman. They just keep trotting him out. He's going to take a snap at quarterback. He had a great prep career in Georgia. He's from Statesboro, Georgia. Number 12. And now he's going to get a crack. And they'll hand off. And a big run out of the Minnesota territory. Artis Chambers with the run. <laughs> he was Actually, in. Mike Milano with the yeah. carry. Mike just about popped it. Mike might be a little bit of a Rudy story here. Just guessing. There's a couple of 38s in the uh, yeah. roster. Yeah, that's a redundant number, so it's kind of hard to tell who's who. But it's nice to see that the kids that practice hard so much and don't get to play very often get in a game like this. Another run. Milano to the 42-yard line. Michigan coming up after today has an in-state rivalry game with Michigan State on the road. Then they go to Wisconsin. And then they come back home for the big game against Ohio State. And it very well could decide the Big Ten again. Well, that's exactly right. But what happened, Ron English, as, as we began to say a while ago, he said tradition allows you to do well in adversity because you're reminded of what you're supposed to be as a Michigan football team. Right. And this team remembered. Milano again. And in a lot of ways, maybe that adversity at the very beginning of the season is going to turn out to be a blessing for this Michigan team. They well, every, went through some discovery phases early. You never have a great football team that doesn't go through some kind of adversity. You lose a key player or some tragedy occurs and you have to fight back from that. That's why football is a valuable teacher about life. If you just don't give up, if you get up off the ground and continue to fight, then you always have a chance. And if you got a lot of great players and smart coaches like Michigan, you might be champions. Michigan rushing the football today over 300 yards on the ground. And while Ryan Mallett was struggling, that's what got Michigan through large portions of this game, Coach. That's exactly right, and that's what Michigan football is supposed to be. When Bo Schimbeckler was still around here, I'd love to go by and see him when I came up here, and I'd say, how are we doing, Bo, here at Michigan? Now, we don't run the ball like we should. Well, they ran it like they should today. How would you grade out Mallett? I would grade out Mallett as uh, adequate. Uh, because he, he has such a wonderful touch on the deep ball, but he's got to learn to take care of the football when he gets sacked, and he's got to learn to not drop the ball without those unforced errors. Those must change by next week. Now well, Michigan is going to go to 7-2. and two. Pass and a catch, and down to the 21-yard line. David Cohn through that pass, and that's going to do it. 34 to 10, Michigan gets the win. They stay on top of the Big Ten, and they are going to be watching very closely to that game in Happy Valley tonight as Ohio State, the number one team in the land, takes on Penn State. You know they're going to be rooting for an upset tonight. And would that even be an upset, Coach? i got to ask you that. <laughs> no, I, don't, I think that's an even game. I mean, I, if anything, Penn State should probably be favored in that stadium. But it'll be a great football game, and I don't think Michigan cares what anybody else does right now. They're taking care of their own business, and you really have to admire this coaching staff and this group of seniors for bringing this team off the mat into this kind of performance, and they'll need to continue to improve. Today's Chevrolet players of the game, Michigan. Mario Manningham and Davis for Minnesota. Good job defensively. Ten tackles, one forced fumble. In recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. When we come back to the big house, we'll wrap it up 34-10. Michigan wins its seventh straight. They keep the jug in hand. Thirty-four ten, the final. No Henny, no Hart, but Michigan gets it done over Minnesota today. Like I said so many times today, when you're a traditional power and you get embarrassed, you got two choices: you can wallow around and have a terrible season, or you can fight back. And the senior leadership and the veteran staff, headed by Lloyd Carr, and I think, frankly, Jake Long, 
just did a great job of pulling this team off the carpet, and now they're in the in the hunt, and they really have a legitimate chance to be champions again. We'll take on Michigan State next on the road, 34-10. The Wolverines win it. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. On behalf of our entire ESPN crew, for Coach Bill Curry, I'm Clay Mappick. Good night from Ann Arbor.